So I see people are joining. Let's probably get started. Welcome everyone to the talk about Fedora and all contributor survey. This is the second time we run it this year in June. And it's all about like how we did it again. So let me just dive in. Actually, I'm going to start with the most important slide of them all. This is the highlight of this survey uh, this year. So this is the second run. So obviously we need to compare this run with the previous one. And if we look at the participation numbers, these are just amazing. So in 2021, we had 800 people uh, re replying to the survey. We thought it's a really good, a very big number. And in 2022, we got 1,777 replies, like module plus minus five uh, things, uh, which I maybe missed. And this is really, I think, a huge success. And I think it's a really nice to see that like survey is not uh, became boring as a topic, but rather people actually enjoyed it the first time and uh, participated more the second time. So. I really hope we will keep that trend going and we will get more people participating because this is really an interesting opportunity to get a look inside a Fedora community and see what people are using, what people are doing. And this is the main reason why we wanted to run it. And yeah, we highlight also the satisfaction rate versus the average number, which is counted. So people were uh, asked it in the last um, question of a survey to rate their satisfaction of with Fedora project uh, rated from one to five. And in 2021, we had 4.23. And in 2022, we have like so many more participants and the satisfaction rate was even bigger. It is. 4.28 now. So we're doing, I think, pretty good with respect to those numbers. Let's keep it uh, running. But yeah, let's now talk a bit how we keep it running. So since this was the first, uh, the second run of the survey, and you know, this joke, like if you do it once, do it manually. If you do it twice, like repeat the process. And if you do it three times, automate. So we're not fully automated. Uh, this thing yet, but we uh, really try to focus this year not on like changing that many things, but um, on understanding the process better and making this process open and reproducible so that it's not just me or Marie uh, who can uh, create this survey, but this is uh, something which we would we plan to do every year continuously, and we want people to be able to jump in and do the work or change the work or participate in the open manner. So what we did to achieve that, uh, first of all, we agreed on a fixed schedule. So everyone needs to remember that Fedora and all contributors survey runs in June. And this is the month when we ask questions. And sometimes it's all the same questions. Some it's Times it's a couple of new questions, but be ready and you don't even need these banner announcements. You just need to get used to it in June, uh, answer the survey and we are good. Second step, Marie actually created a step-by-step -step how to, in Fedora console doc, how to make survey happening, uh, to, to happen. So we described preparation, we described request to a, for a badge, request for a banner, how to, uh, uh, we also put the uh, estimate date, dates when it needs to happen so that people have time and so on. And we really tried really hard to follow that step by step how to this year to test it and see if it works. Of course, we missed deadlines several times, but in the end, we followed the process and it was a much more easy than it was at the first time. So I'm quite satisfied with this um, description and it helped. We also put questions of this survey in the same Fedora console docs repository, and it's in markdown format. So it, when we talk about these numbers later, if you see uh, like questions needs rewarding or questions needs different variants, or you want to change it completely and suggest a different aspect of, of Fedora to, to look into, you can really just go and submit a pull request for that repository and we will review that and we will talk through this and 
change the next uh, year survey to uh, to accommodate for this um, interest points from community. So it's everyone's uh, like open process to participate and we welcome everyone to join us. And we already had uh, one more person joining. Thank you, uh, Ashlyn, for helping with the banner and organization work. So this is, uh, was the main focus. And I said, uh, I think we did a really good job to set up the next step would be automate all this, but yeah, we will see <laughs> how it goes next year. And now let's look into numbers, actually not numbers, but a lot of bar charts. As, as I said, like we are learning as we go and uh, I had to learn a bit of the pandas while <laughs> creating these things. And my uh, level of panda knowledge, pandas knowledge is uh, kind of bar charts. So I will pre be presenting a lot of those uh, right now. And yeah, if you have different ideas and want to work with this data, the data will be published, the sanitized part of the data will be published for anyone to play. So uh, this is like the opening question, which we ask is what, what are your roles in Fedora project? And people were able to choose multiple roles and we uh, pre-seeded some of those in, in uh, the options to, to answer but people went then creative in the comment section, which uh, maybe mean that we are not uh, covering all the possibilities here. So this is the opportunity for you to suggest different options for that list through a pull request. Everything is welcome. But this is the uh, current state. So we have, of course, users, package maintainers, and uh, all other groups. But I think that uh, I was interested in some other aspect of this. Uh, so I tried to add some uh, layer into this graph. So I uh, linked this question with a question, is uh, English your first language? Because I wanted to check uh, if uh, we have like certain roles which are uh, dominated by English speaking community and may, uh, which are like hard for non-native speaker to join. And from the graph, at least my, uh, Conclusion from this uh, confirms my estimations <laughs> is that Fedora is pretty much a diverse community and we really have representatives of uh, non-native uh, English speaking countries participating in like all areas of Fedora uh, contributions. So which is, I think, a very good uh, outcome of this question. Of course, this is our all time favorite, the what's your preferred desktop environment. And uh, this is uh, how the questions, uh, how the answers were uh, given. GNOME is our default uh, desktop environment, KD goes second, and we have various uh, spins and possibilities. So in this slide, we can actually say, okay, GNOME rules because it is default. And this, uh, gets to us to the next slide, which is what's your preferred text editor? And I have a note here. So, so we had actually two questions in the survey. One is what's your preferred text editor? And the other is uh, for small random edits. And the other was uh, what's your preferred like development environment? And the expectation was that uh, when you do one line changes, you use one editor, but when you dive deep into the coding, you probably use a more advanced uh, IDE thing. So this question actually asks about a small random edits, what, what you use for that. And we see that Vim is uh, winning in the uh, Nano, which is currently a default text editor in Fedora, is uh, not really getting as much attention as Vim does. And then I also <laughs> uh, wanted to check this question with um, the uh, roles uh, Fedora has uh, have. And yeah, honestly speaking, this question is like the main reason why I even started this whole Fedora survey effort, because uh, when we were discussing like what's the default text editor, uh, we were talking about like what people uh, prefer uh, and yeah in this graph I would say we also don't have a strong preference for Nano even though it has a preferential treatment right now as a default editor maybe it's too early to see I'm not trying to make really um, suggestions here but this is the data we have right now so <laughs> 
Now, uh, yeah, the maybe uh, interesting uh, question would be like, why is it actually the, the thing here in Fedora? So how does it correlate with the uh, existing knowledge of Linux, which people have? Uh, so the theory uh, we wanted to verify was, uh, do people who have less Linux knowledge prefer Nano and people who have more uh, Linux knowledge prefer Veeam. So I created one more graph uh, for Veeam on Nano per Linux knowledge. And uh, you can see that, yes, of course, for uh, so, so we were able to rate the Linux knowledge uh, self as uh, it's a self-assessment. So the participants of the survey were asked to rate their Linux knowledge on, on the scale from one to five. Uh, do they feel they are like beginners or they are the power users? And I also linked that uh, these answers with the Vim or Nano question. And uh, we can see that uh, Nano is used by power users as well. But it's still like far from default, or even on the uh, like level two, we still don't. We still have people preferring Vim over Nano anyway. So I'm going to stop here because you probably see that I'm bi biased uh, uh, in this old holy war topic. But this is uh, something which I wanted to show you as an application of the Fedora survey, which we can do when we're participating in all sorts of holy wars and con conversations and also trying to make decisions about Fedora audience uh, and about our like set of defaults and our choices in uh, the workstation or whatever it is. So uh, consider this as a like example, but also consider how maybe you can use uh, this Fedora survey for your own purposes and what questions you want to be answered. Because yeah, this topic was specifically my interest, so I make it so that it uh, becomes possible through this survey. But uh, we're open to all kinds of research topics like this. Uh, think about it, come join us, and we, we can do similar things uh, later. Now, the other topics which I like to highlight is that um, uh, would you uh, is the modules and flat packs. So this is the slide about modules. Uh, let me explain a bit. So the blue uh, part of the graph is just all responses of all people who uh, uh, had to un uh, answer the question, would you recommend you, uh, mo using modules for uh, anyone? And we see that majority of answers were uh, that people still like, don't know what modules are and what's the purposes of them. And the orange line here is uh, just representing uh, the same kind of answers, but a filter to only the people who actually at least tried modules at least once. So still like there is quite enough of no questions, uh, no answers, but also the yes answers of course appear. And uh, the similar setup I did for the flat pack question. And here we see a different picture. So flat packs are really adopted a lot in the among the participants of the survey. Uh, people use them, people at least tried them, and people also would love to recommend them for, I guess, certain use cases. Not everyone, of course, but uh, yeah, a lot of people enjoy flat packs a lot. What else? Uh, yeah, of course, we are mandatory. What programming languages do you use? This is, was a multi-choice question. Of course, Python wins. I mean, um, there are attempts to add uh, Bash to that list. I, I see them when, when people vote other and they put Bash a lot there. I'm still kind of not convinced that we should count Bash as a <laughs> programming language in this in this case but uh you can convince me uh differently and yeah again we can change this uh options uh and, and add bash here i'm i actually maybe it's worth adding and we can compare if bash will win over python or not next year so uh, let me know what you think about that and if it's worth doing so uh and yeah we see quite a lot of uh, java rust go whatever it is so uh yeah um uh, maybe 
we should uh, see uh, changes in, in, in this uh, over time. And this actually raises one more interesting question, which is, uh, I hope everyone realizes that if you started to answer this survey one year, then it would be really nice if you continue to answer this survey every year next, because we will be, uh, the, the more we run this survey, the more we're interested in the trends and also in the changes of your answers. So don't think that if you answered it once last year, you do, you're you free and to go and don't need to participate anymore. This is the uh, continuous effort. And uh, I hope it's not too hard for participants to just see similar questions next year and just see if, if something changed over time or not. And uh, also a bit of an interesting question uh, to me at least is uh, what forge systems people do use now in uh, how it it's also would be interested in, in historical retrospective, but we currently we, we don't have too much data about this. So this is the current state. We have a lot of GitHub, GitLab users, Pagor. We see some Garrett users also. Uh, it's nice to see fellow Garrett users in Fedora as well. And uh, yeah, we also have quite a number of people who don't use Forge systems or don't admit they use them. And uh, yeah, this is the state of 2022. And uh, I we have more questions and more numbers to share generally, but I haven't prepared that many graphs for every question. So I wanted to show the highlights, which I saw. I will, uh, uh, I want to highlight what one thing is that in this survey, we had like a lot of yes or no, choose the tool questions, but we also had comment fields. And uh, uh, I want that people to realize that these comment fields are not going like, uh, not wasted and uh fedora console and fedora project leader literally reads every comment you put in that survey so it is valuable information and uh i think matthew in his talk yesterday uh did some ref uh, reference some of those comments and uh addressed that so these uh, comments fields is not something we can share freely i'm i'm actually not completely sure how to uh, organize the process around this better because when we allow free form text field we allow people to write whatever they want and then it becomes a privacy issue to uh, share this uh, outside of a very like limited group which we intended it to share so currently these comments are visible for fedora project Lee and or console but maybe uh, some kind of uh, work can be done to make it also more are public or maybe we can add an option to this comment where people can request a public feedback on their comment yeah uh, so something like Mira says so, so that comment can be shared and uh, we can write a, in a response to that in, in some of the public channels so oh uh, yeah but still even now without the formal process it's still being read and all uh, 1007 not all uh, 1700 people wrote uh comments but uh everyone who wrote uh this this was heard and, and read by uh, fpl and so uh, yeah the next steps are on this uh, thing as i said this year we were focused more on the, uh, on on documenting and uh, writing uh, de detailed guides how to do things i still am uh, planning to publish community blog article with these graphs and referencing the uh, raw data source like sanitized without text form uh, text comments I want also to work on some automation of the processing of this data because uh, the first year uh, we tried really hard to like uh, read every like field in the other comment and uh, use it and then transform it into a yes or no answer and a new column in the data. And it honestly took huge amount of work. And this year I was just uh, realizing that 
uh, I'm probably demanding too much from that process and I need to relax the expectations a bit. So uh, we relied mostly like the, the other column. I basically replaced all the values in the other com column with just the other. And this was the way to like formalize this process and automate it e easier. And uh, we, we probably need to look more into, into the ways how uh, it can be done via script, not manually, and uh, reduce the manual review to the comments fields and to uh, the search for obvious like spam trolling uh, entries, which are not useful to any analysis. Uh, yeah, I'm also, as I said, I will go on, I'm going to publish this sanitized data set for everyone to play. I'm uh, going to iterate on questions. Uh, I'm also inviting everyone to think about it. We, of course, want to run this survey in June uh, 2023. And uh, if you want to participate in the process or in the design, just join. This is now a documented process. And this uh, is all going to, yeah going to happen soon. <laughs> I think uh, I have time for questions. So if if there are questions, let's look into the chat and everywhere. If not, I can show you how I did it uh, this time. And uh, so you can see how much help we need, really. <laughs> so uh, any questions in the chat? Okay, while you think about something, I'm going to show you my super awesome Jupyter notebook, which I have created to parse this survey. So yeah, this is basically uh, date, data which we're adding. And then, yeah, this is the... Uh, function which I use to draw the columns, uh, to, to draw the number of yes answers in a certain column. And I can show you how the uh, survey looks, how this uh, thing looks like. So we have responses, we have columns, and we have yes or no questions for each option for this question. So if there is a question, what's your role in the Fedora project? Then uh, there is the possible variance with the answer. And then there's a yes or no column. And then it becomes a bit of a magical thing to me. So this is how I am trying to do the plot format. And this is how the output looks like. So this is not a rocket science. This is a very basic science. And uh, if you, I will actually submit this uh, Jupyter uh, notebook also to the docs repository for anyone to look at and also uh, to invite people to show me how to do it better, much better than, than it is right now. And that's all I had for this talk. And if there are no other questions, then uh, thank you for coming. Uh, the community blog article is coming and if you have any specific questions you want to ask and to draw the graph, you can reach out to me, ping me on Matrix and say like, what if we draw this kind of picture and I will try to draw it for you. I'm still learning, but I will try. And uh, we actually are interested in getting these ideas, like what kind of questions people may ask from this data. Feel free to participate. Thanks everyone and see you in the uh, social events, I guess, next time. <laughs>